Let's go. Let's do it. Okay, awesome. Hey, welcome everybody. So Coach BK here with Coral and we are super excited you're here and we are going to kick off a first kind of class lecture on the essentials of what you need to know about triathlon biking. Um, really trying to bring it down a notch and just, just the essentials so um, those new to triathlon feel equipped to take on the task of triathlon. So I'm Coach BK, head coach of Braving Karma, and my lovely assistant, Coral. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm great. So I'm Coach Coral, uh, assistant coach at Braving Karma, and super excited to be here. So this is one so, of my favorite topics. Thank yeah, you. I love that you really kind of spearheaded this and, and you know, it's near and dear to my heart. Um, we're going to try to through this series of biking for sure. And, you know, I was inspired this morning to take on this swim as well um, after this, just to try to take away as many obstacles as you can um, to get into triathlon. So that's our intention, just the essentials, make it more approachable. So let's dig in. Coral. What do you want to talk about first? So first off, you can't bike without a bike, right? So um, let's see, do a screen share here. Just talk a little bit about what type of bike do you need right. for your first triathlon or first racing season. So I know a lot of folks, um, this is probably one of the more unfamiliar areas. Um, you know, running's pretty accessible. Most people have been in the pool. And when it comes to cycling, probably did some sort of biking around their neighborhood when you were a kid. But as an adult, a lot of people don't have what they might deem a try-worthy bike. So I'm here to dispel the myth that you need a $1,000 bicycle to do your first race. So all these bikes here, I have seen every single type of bike you could possibly imagine at a triathlon. So whether it's a beach cruiser or a mountain bike or you know what people consider a more triathlon mainstream triathlon bike like a road bike or a triathlon bike and we'll talk about the difference of those here in just a second but pretty much any bike that you have that is in you know decent shape and by decent I mean it's got a saddle it's got roadworthy wheels and the most important thing really really good brakes yeah. um, you can you can do a triathlon on it. Um, you know, probably the most important thing though is that you take, you know, say you've got a bike in your garage, been hanging out there for a little bit. My best suggestion would be to take the bike into your local bike shop or have a good buddy look at it who's you know knowledgeable about bikes. Make sure that everything is in proper working order and that it's safe to ride. Um, get a helmet and then you're pretty much good to go. Um, you know, beach cruiser, we'll talk, just talk about a few of these main types of bikes here for just a couple of minutes. Um, but you know, everybody kind of is familiar with your beach cruiser. It's going to be a little bit heavier, perhaps a bit harder to pedal. If this is the only type of bike that you have access to, by all means use it, but you may find it a bit discouraging to do for a prolonged uh, period of time on a bike like this. So just be aware that it's going to be more effort, but you could potentially build a really great cycling base and awesome strength by riding one of these. <laughs> uh, kind of working uh, to the right hand side, mountain bike, uh, it's a little bit more of, of a race type uh, positioning. You know, you're not quite as seated back as you would as a beach cruiser, but the fatter tires, again, are gonna create a little bit more rolling resistance than perhaps a road bike or a tri bike. So again, a little bit more effort to pedal, um, but they actually have what they call a fat tire division in a number of races where you are actually competing against other people that are also racing on mountain bikes. So that's kind of a, a cool thing. And if you really are sold on mountain biking, you could consider an off-road triathlon. Um, that series is called Xterra. And so if you really are down with the mountain biking, that might be a really good fit for you. Uh, kind of working down this blue bike down here, that configuration is a road bike. So you've got a much skinnier tire, 
the tread is really quite smooth. And, you know, if you're not really familiar with this bike, it might take a little bit of getting used to. The steering's a lot more responsive. Um, and the biggest difference between the road bike that we see versus the triathlon bike that has these extensions out on the front is that, you know, it's a bit more comfortable. Um, you'll notice the seat tube on the road bike is a bit more tilted back versus the road bike or the triathlon bike, excuse me, is going to put you in a more forward position so that you can lean forward onto the aero bars and get a more aerodynamic position. So, you know, if, if you're completely sold that triathlon is your thing, that you're going to be doing it for a long time. I've known people that have jumped straight from a beach cruiser and gotten themselves a tri bike and been completely happy. But just note that that's going to be probably going to be a little bit of a learning curve. But once you get it and you're good to go, um, you know, that that might just be your jam, the tri bike. Um, the only caveat that I will say with that is if you are going to be riding with groups, you may want to consider getting a road bike as a nice middle ground because you'll be able to have a lot more control on your maneuverability. It's going to be really comfortable, but it'll also serve you quite well for a triathlon racing season. So pretty much bottom line, whatever you've got that's in working order, you can do a triathlon on. Um, but to kind of figure out what might be the best fit for you, for your budget, for your goals, definitely head over to your local bike shop and I'm sure they can work with you to figure out what that good fit is. So Bonnie, do you have anything to add? Um, <clears throat> no, not really. The only thing to add maybe would be, um, if you're gonna jump straight to a triathlon bike, do your research and, and ask some folks because um, they're all kind of built differently. They are adjustable differently. Some bikes are well adjusted. Some aren't to be kind of customized for you and what race you're doing. Um, so if you do that and you're spending the money, just do a little bit more research because um, different types of bikes, different brands of bikes fit different type of people. And then, um, <clears throat> like you said, if you're going to ride in groups, um, it's important that um, riding an arrow you don't do in groups um, for a safety factor. So the road bike is is a good option if you're wanting to do a lot of road riding with groups. That's a it's pretty fun, but you need to make sure that you're safe because uh, knowing how to handle your bike is really important because um, you can get really hurt on the bike. So excellent. Good stuff. So what have we got next? Next is, what are we talking about next? Bike pictures, whoop, whoop. pedals. Okay, so um, <clears throat> normal bikes, you know, kids running around, that type of bike, we don't, um, you're just putting your foot on top of the pedal. When you get into road biking and triathlon biking in general, you can get a clipped in system, which requires a different pedal and then a shoe specific and they need to match up and you don't have to do that you could do just pedals with tennis shoes and that's fine um, for sure you can do a middle ground and do um, pedals and then they have a strap on cage so you get the benefit of sort of strapping in um, the benefit of clipping in or using the straps on pedals is that you learn better ergonomics with biking. You don't just use your quads to push down. You can kind of lift up. And so it's easier long-term. That's the benefit of learning how to clip in. Um, and then like triathlon bike and stuff like that. If you're going longer distances, you might want to encourage yourself to learn how to deal with um, clipping in in your shoes. It, it can be a little bit scary, but totally do not have to do that in your first season. I've seen folks do, um, I've had people <laughs> pass me on a mountain bike, not clipped in with tennis shoes on and completely pass me on my tri bike. Isn't that crazy? That's pretty crazy. <laughs> but you, you don't have to clip in. You don't have to do that if you um, don't feel comfortable doing that. However, the, the benefits of it, um, 
and make it easier long term. So what do you think, Coral? So the big the biggest thing that I hear from folks that are newer to triathlon or newer to or that have been riding for a little bit but still haven't made that transition to clipping in, the most common reason is that folks are afraid to fall. Yes. So what do you what do you do about that? Okay, you're gonna fall. You're gonna fall. You are. You're gonna be going probably zero mile an hour and fall. Um, what I have folks do is practice on, um, practice. So when you're standing there, practice what it feels like to get your foot in and out before you take off and always do one foot, always unclip one foot, get into that habit. Um, you're going to fall. And so what I tell people, keep your hands on the bars, kind of keep your feet in. Don't try to save yourself. Um, you can break a wrist or you know, hurt your shoulder by trying to save yourself, just fall over. The person we're with will might giggle a little bit after they ask you if you're okay, you'll probably skin your knee up. Um, but it, everybody falls and really, for a couple of years, how many years did you do triathlon before you stopped falling? Mine was, I think I fell in the beginning of the season, probably three years into it. <laughs> and every once in a while, I still kind of jack it up. Yeah, I mean, I probably fell a couple times my first, you know, a couple of few times when I was initially learning. And then for whatever reason, I started unclipping. It was after I started surfing a lot. And for whatever reason, my brain decided it wanted to start unclipping on the other side. Oh, but in that transition period, I accidentally leaned the wrong way. I unclipped with my right foot and leaned to my left. Yeah. And yes. Right into my buddy. But we were both okay. The bikes were okay. So it was just, right. yeah. I mean, you just, you laugh about it. But so it, it still does happen. But, you know, I have no broken bones or scars to show for it. So, right. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, okay. This is an important thing. What's super duper, uber, uber, super uber, duper important? <sighs> Yes. Before you even think about getting a bike, get a helmet. Get a helmet. It doesn't have to be. Go ahead. Investment. You can always get a new helmet. You can always get a new bike, but you can never get a new brain. So. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be expensive. Um, any of the bikes that are bike helmets are going to be, they're going to have certain, follow certain regulations. Um, so Walmart is fine. Whatever. Have your kids wear helmets too. And it's actually the law in many states, yeah. for, especially for young people, to wear a helmet. So be smart, wear your brain bucket. <laughs> and one thing that I didn't know, if you have an accident and you land on your head and your bike helmet helps you, you have to get a new one. Mm -hmm. So helmet. You yeah, need to replace it about every three to four years. Okay. So. Super yeah. deal, super deal. Um, what to wear. So we're new, we're new to triathlon. There's a, it kind of depends on, um, how far it is. If it's a sprint, th there's not a lot of, um, you know, kind of, oh, you have to do it this way. If you were doing, you know, Olympic, you'd maybe want to think a little bit more, shop a little bit more. And certainly for, if you were just going like some of us do and be like, Oh, I'm going to go do a half Ironman. So we'll show you some different options. Yes. So just real quick for folks that might not be familiar with, so sprint distance triathlon, the bike portion is usually about 10 to 12 miles. There's some even a little bit shorter, super sprints, usually four to six. And then you've got your sprint. So like I said, 10 to 12, Olympics usually a bit closer to 24 to 26 miles. Half Ironman, you're starting to talk 50 plus, and then Ironman, 112. So there's a huge span, and like Bonnie's saying, and going to talk a bit more about, you know, the distance. The longer the distance, the more comfort you're going to need and want. Right. So. Okay, so let's just do starting out um, budget or this is what you have or you're flying by the seat of your pants and you're busy. Okay, you can totally do, 
you know, your, your swimsuit, right? Um, and you might want to wear a bra underneath the swimsuit, perhaps, if you're not changing through all of this. So, you know, for a sprint, so you're starting out, you really don't want to, you can't change, you can't get naked. Um, so you could wear your swimsuit and you could pull shorts on over that, just regular shorts, and then just even a t-shirt over that. So you get done with your swim and then you can put on, you know, shirt, have your bra underneath maybe, and put your shorts on and off you go. Okay. Um, so that would be for a sprint. You would want to think about if you wanted to do something different, if you were doing a little bit longer, just because of the amount of material between like in your groin area, if you were running six miles with a swimsuit on, you could totally do it. But when you got home to shower, you would have some severe chafing and then you'd be like, OMG. <laughs> Never doing another try. <laughs> right. Um, but it, it's totally doable. Um, sometimes I swim in just like the swim top or a bra. I even have a Nike bra that I like swimming in. And so some races I will swim in the bra. And then so you could do this different thing where you could like, oh, I'm going to get tri shorts. Okay. So tri shorts kind of look like this. These are seven inch. Okay. They're tighter. They're form fitting. Tri shorts have very little um, padding right here. Just a little bit of a, what's this thing called? The chamois. Thank you. What do we put on the chamois? Chamois cream, butter. Butter? Hey, you can't see it. Butter. butter. Is that is butter? That type of butter. Butter. <laughs> we'll talk a bit more about what this is in a little bit. So um, this protects the parts, right? And when you're doing shorter stuff, you don't need a lot of cushion and actually your legs and your back and everything will appreciate less. And really, um, you wouldn't want bike shorts because then you feel on the run that you were running in a diaper and it'd be wet diaper, wet diaper. Um, so there's that. So if you're doing, you know, you could go and these go on sale all the time. You know, like Swim Outlet, I think you can find some stuff. Um, there's sales all the time, discount codes. So if you were to do the tri shorts, and some of us have to wear a bra, and so I would swim in this possibly and then put something else on later perhaps, or a bra and then a tri top, okay? Um, the tri top needs to be kind of loose, uh, not loose, needs to be tight fitting because it'll slow you down in the pool a little bit. You want to kind of tight. Um, and then like, I particularly like the Pearl Azumi brand for beginning because I feel like it's the most accommodating. Um, the longer, so if you have a longer torso or a little more forgiving on like me, I identify with Pillsbury Dough Girl a little bit sometimes, um, and that shirt is a little more accommodating. So when it's tight, and you know the race pictures look decent, so that's a nice one to start out with. Um, if you're going longer, you might want to think about bike shorts. So bike shorts look very similar. Okay. But you can see where the diaper thing comes in, right? There's a lot of padding right here, and it looks like so, right? So your sit bones sit here, like the lady parts right there, okay? And you just lather all of that up with chamois butter. Um, running in this, though, is kind of uncomfortable, but you can do it. So if you do have these, you can do it. It's, it's just a little uncomfortable. Um, and then so you could use shorts and the bra and then maybe like a, a jersey. So this is a bike jersey. Um, you know, they come sleeved, half, sleeveless. The nice thing with these is they have some real estate back here where you can put stuff in there. So um, there is that. Hey, there you are. Okay. Did I miss anything on clothing? It's really kind of pretty low key. You can find stuff on sale. 
um, a lot of the time you really don't need to stress with it just um, you know nice bra and shorts and some races have uh, kind of rules with don't be naked so all of them do don't be naked hey coral I can't hear you love oops let's try that again Bam. <laughs> No, I was just saying um, to myself and now to y'all, um, you know, one of the cardinal rules of triathlon is nothing new on race day. So that goes for, you know, knowing how to take care of all of your bike maintenance and especially doing your shammy better, but also training in what you're going to race in. Yeah. Before. And so you know that that you're not going to be chafing in any weird spots where you need to apply your chamois butter. Um, so yeah, you're trying out your shorts, your bra top, whatever. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea of price range, I found, uh, Bonnie, you were mentioning the Pearl Azumi Tri Shorts. I've seen those. Swim Outlet is a really great um, discount bike, or sorry, swim and triathlon site. Uh, Sierra Trading Post also has really good sales. I found Pearl Azumi stuff on there for about 15 to 20 bucks. Fry tops and bottoms, performance bike, and the list goes on. Absolutely. Yeah, there are plenty of plenty of places where you can find stuff for, for the cheap. Yeah, so, and what I would say if, you know, the ideal world in getting started with triathlon is to find shorts and a tri top. Um, that you like, black is better, um, white kind of gets a little discolored, some colors, but that's that's where I would lean towards, um, just for comfort's sake, mm -hmm. and you not changing and not stressing out, because the whole triathlon thing, there's a lot to it, so kind of minimize how much you need to do and, and stress out about, and so that would be a good mm -hmm. good place to invest, Good a nice helmet, maybe a tri top and, and shorts. Okay. And they do last, so. That's good news. They do. They do. I want to say one more thing. The chamois butter stuff, not this, that. Or oh, it also it. comes in a right. tube, not a tube, but like a cream. Yeah. Like cold cream. <laughs> they have spray too. I like to spray the tri spray, the tri glide. Whoop, whoop. That stuff's awesome. Or aerosol. This is really great for your feet. So, but what all of these do is prevent the chafing. The chafing. The chafing. So things like chamois butter, they've a lot of these have really fun names. Um, but the chamois butter that Bonnie was talking about. You can put this, some people like to put it directly on their chamois pad. I am personally of the camp. I, I just put it on the parts, my body, on my parts. Yep. Uh, and you can really get in, I mean, you get up in there <laughs> and then I carry baby wipes. If I'm doing a really, really long ride and I have to reapply, I'll just take baby wipes with me to kind of yep. clean, clean my hands up. Um, but this is a lifesaver. So just a heads up, some of these have kind of a refreshing feeling, so. They do. Uh, <laughs> note if you have any pre-existing chafing that it might be a bit better to go with something more neutral. Um, another thing that I love and could not do tries without, um, especially more on the running side, is Body Glide. Um, body Glide is great for the armpit area, under the bra, like where your bra line hits, chest, um, and then also talking about the tri slide. This is really great for your feet because it's just a clear spray. Um, it's not sticky or anything, but it just lubes things up real well. Um, but if you're getting between toes or mainly between toes, but this also works for chamois. And we'll talk. We'll talk more about in an, another series, probably the swim stuff about wetsuit stuff. Um, that stuff gets, helps you get your wetsuit on. Like that. Like a breeze. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Super. So we've talked about bikes and helmets and helmets. Um, clothing. Chamois butter. Not butter butter. <laughs> Did you know that this
this is a whole one. This is one block. This isn't four of them put together. It's one big block of butter. I'm making an enormous cake. Go big or go home. <laughs> okay. What else? Cool. Okay. So let's see. So it's not all about the bike and it's not all about clothes. What, what other gear do we need, Ani? Other than you need sunglasses, Ooh. you need glasses to protect the eyeballs, bugs. Those are so, nice. Glasses. Something with a little, these are a birthday present, they're my favorite. Those are awesome. Um, so, you know, a, a good cycling sunglass is going to have a little bit bigger lens than, say, you know, I've seen people wear aviators too, yeah. but I mean, you can find, these are a little bit up, more upscale because they're lighter weight. Just a $10 pair of sunglasses though from the drugstore will do you just fine. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's not necessarily about the sun. Of course they do help with your vision, but making sure that stuff's not getting in your eyes like bugs, dirt, grit, goodness knows what else. It, these really are critical. Um, yeah. I won't ride without them. So. Oh, you can't ride a bike without sunglasses. You'll no. And they okay. make clear ones too for early morning and you know, my favorite, um, my favorite if if you can invest in a sunglass, um, I can't remember the it starts with a T, that brand, Tofusi or Supposy. that one. They have interchangeable ones, but you know, if you got a um a rose colored I find that the rose colored is probably the most versatile because if it's cloudy, you can still see, but it does block enough of, and you're looking down most of the time on the bike anyway. That's the one that I like the most, but um, whatever, just cover the eyeballs because they're important. You have one brain, two eyes. Don't be messing them up. Okay. Water, hydration on the bike. Um, there's a number of ways to skin that cat. <clears throat> so um, water's important. We'll go over all of that later on, but you can have um, cages, like bike bottle cages on your bike. Um, and you can have a, um, what's it called? Camelback. Camelback. <laughs> you can do that if you wanted to. Do what? With your little tube? Yes. Yeah. Um, some bikes, you can put bike bottles on the front of the bike or on your handlebars. That's kind of maybe a triathlon bike 103 conversation for sure on how to do that. But water is key and probably the easiest is to maybe put a bike, um, a bike cage on your bike. That's what I would say to do. Um, what do you think? Yeah. So I know some people when they're first learning get or you know are kind of transitioning to more of a road bike tri bike the key is just practicing because you're going to feel kind of unsteady doing one hand and then reaching down to get your bottle if you've got it on your down tube so kind of in the frame of the bike you're gonna have to reach down and grab it to drink so being steady on one hand is really key um again just if you have a bike trainer so a stationary trainer where you can just put your bike you're not going to topple over that's a really good way to practice and then practicing out on the street like in a parking lot and just practice 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 but it you know say you really just want to get out there you're doing a race but you are still kind of uncomfortable since there are going to be a lot of people around you a safety consideration may be just for you know your first season or so using a camelback i've seen plenty of people use the camelback and that's a hand mostly hands-free because you can kind of right. reach down there and grab it um but you know it's it really boils down to whatever you're most comfortable with um the nice thing about having a couple bike bottles on your bike itself is that you can do one with water you could maybe do one with Gatorade or some other nutrition and kind of separate it out right. um, yeah so those that's my two cents on the yeah. <laughs> on the water bottle front Yes, it's like the helmet for me. Um, you have to have water. Don't not don't not drink water. Um, it's it's really important. So, 
Um, the other thing that bikers need to do is to have identification. Oh, you can't see. Mine has a, a med alert because I need a med alert because I'm cray cray. They need to know that. <laughs> Bobby, what do you call that bracelet that you have? This is a road ID, um, the brand road ID. And so it has your name on it. Mine has my personal life saying on it as well. And then some information on what a paramedic would need to know if I couldn't speak for myself. Mine also has a, I put the interactive stuff on, so it has a phone number and a website that someone could go to, but really name and in case of an emergency, and you want to make sure that that in case of emergency person is someone that actually answers their phone all the time and isn't racing with you, okay? So, <laughs> um, you know, and is kind of up to date with what's going on with you if you have a medical, like say you have, you know, type one diabetic or Two, or maybe have some heart rhythm issues or whatever it is okay so they say either this or um, the paramedics the EMS also say they look for necklaces so those two things it, it's really important um, just to have these around because you have bike accidents if you're biking by yourself whatnot um, it's smart for folks to know where you're at what you're doing kind of um, just be smart smart biker Smart biker. I mean, these are, whether it's a contact in your phone or right. an ID bracelet, these run, I think you can get them for 10 bucks. It's like 10 bucks and you can always find a $5 off coupon, um, you know, and it's nice to have and favorite colors. Mine say shut up legs. <laughs> I have a butterfly on mine. Do you really? Yeah. All awesome. sorts of fun stuff. Okay. Good deal. So this one's kind of didn't quite know where to stick it in our list of awesome things to know, but one of the things that I frequently forgot to do when I was first getting into triathlon, because I always race with my dad, so he magically I would wake up and my tires would be inflated. So, you know, just knowing, you know, having a bike pump. So you can have, this is called a floor pump. So it sits on the floor and you inflate your tires. Um, just when you're at home, these are the most useful and handy. Um, they also make hand pumps for inflating your tires that you can actually carry on your bike. And then CO2, and that's again, like a 102, 103 conversation that we'll have at some point in the future. Um, but yeah, just checking the tire pressure, so these floor pumps actually have a tire gauge or a pressure, pressure gauge that'll let you know the PSI. Um, and it will depend on what bike you are using. Typically mountain bikes are somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 40 uh, PSI. Road bikes kind of depends on the size of the rider, what your road conditions look like, anywhere from 100, sometimes 95 if you're a little bit lighter. Uh, up to about 110, 115, even though the max may be 120 for your tires. I kind of want to go with a little bit less. So just making sure you inflate them every time you ride or just double check them and definitely before you race. Something else with the bike pump that you don't be surprised at, um, the apparatus to connect to the tube, it's different than say your car tire. So what is it? Presto. Is that what it's called? Presta. Preston. Preston. Yeah. Um, so it's slimmer, it's smaller, and there will be some bike pumps that don't have it on there. Mine has a switch that it does both, so just be aware of that, um, what type of connection you have on your bike versus what's on your air pump. Yes, and it is good to note that the Presto valves, they're the skinny ones. I mean, they're even smaller than this pen. Tiny yeah. pen. Tiny, and they're a little bit longer. Um, I don't have one right here, otherwise I would show you guys. Um, so that's called a Presta valve. It's just complete, it's all metal, and there's a little uh, piece that presses down when you push it down with the air pump. 
um, mountain bikes and hybrids and beach cruisers, anything that has a really fat tire will more than likely have a Schrader valve, which is fatter, it's rubberized, and it's typically the same type of valve that you'll see on your car tires. So <laughs> total side note, I've actually used a bike pump on my car tires before. <laughs> it takes a really long time though. How hard was that on the back? I got a really good bicep workout. <laughs> did you did you mention that on the Presta pumps you got to unscrew them in yes. order for the air to go in? Okay, I must. Good point. Very good point. Yeah, so don't just cram it on there and it won't go nowhere. And you'll be like, I'm screwing it up. And you'll get an express ticket to learn how to change a flat tire <laughs> very very quickly. Yes. So on there you have to. Um, Half a second, I will show you. So they're like this. Ta -da! Where are we at? Here we go. So you go, and I get this little thing right here. You have to unscrew that. And then I always go, okay. stick that on there, pump it up, do that. This is cosmetic. If you lose the cap, don't stress. It's all good. doesn't do much of anything. And your hands are clean. Ta-da! Okay. I, we strongly recommend that you guys know how to change your tire change your tire we're going to go over that for sure in um triathlon biking 102 and there's um some supportive videos of where i go through in depth um on how to do this activity chick to chick like okay yes <laughs> um so that's awesome know how to change a tire what else so there might be some other things that we could cover lady to lady about women specific issues that you might encounter with riding bikes, fit, yeasty yeah. stuff. So things you need to know. Yeah. That's coming up too. Um, there's also some etiquette, not just for Southern Bells. There's also a bike eti etiquette. Uh, or code of contact, conduct uh, yeah. that's really important both from a respect standpoint but also from a safety standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the governing body of triathlon is called USA Triathlon or USAT. Some people also call it USAT. Um, either way, they have a set of guidelines that you actually need to follow, particularly during races, about drafting, about passing, staying to the right, but we'll cover all of that in 102 or 103. Mm -hmm. Transition. Yeah. Setup. Yes. Me and my dog did a video on that today. <laughs> Seriously, don't take your dog to transition or the kitchen sink, but yes. Good Got to set up so it rolls well and you're mostly chill. So basically, there's a lot more to look forward to. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff and so we're trying to give you just the essentials and we're going to put a lot of this resources on a website um, so you can kind of go back and, okay, I am going to take on changing my bike tire, watch the video, okay, watch the video, go try, do it again. Um, as a coach, I know, unless you're mechanically really like a savant, it takes a couple of times to really get, um, you want to be proficient at this. You don't, you don't want to, you know, have a, or not all that great of a race or, um, because you didn't know how to do some of these kind of things. So we're going to push our stuff outside the box. So we're going to provide some of those resources for you. Awesome. 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 So I am curious to know though, anybody, I know we've got a few people on. If you have questions, there is actually a chat feature. So if you scroll over the video, where you see Bonnie's and my lovely faces. Right. Uh, you'll see a toolbar pop up. There. 
right there Click on the chat and you can ask a question or tell us how much you like this or other things also is there anything that we didn't cover today or mention that we're going to be talking about in the future that you would like to hear more about we'll give you guys a couple seconds to type in anything <laughs> Are you going to go bake some cookies, Bonnie? No, we're doing this no sugar thing. I am too, actually. <laughs> okay, awesome. awesome. Tina, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining. <laughs> cool stuff. Okay, so um, Coach BK, <gasps> Coach Coral. Okay. Um, the triathlon bike 101, look forward to 102, 103, all the zesty stuff. Um, be smart, go try, have a good time, be safe. Namaste. Give us a shot if you have any questions. Yes. Okay, ciao guys. Ciao.